Hi guys, so this week we are learning a pretty difficult song. I would say this is also one of the hardest songs of the semester. Actually at this point the songs are I think getting harder and harder each week. So yeah, please be sure to watch this video until the end, although it's a little long. And uh, yeah, make sure you understand what I'm talking about. And if not, before you spend time practicing a uh, wrong way, reach out to me for clarification. Okay, so this song is challenging. I would say in two main ways. One way is that your hands, both hands will have to move a lot. Yeah, and then another way this song is difficult, I would say, is the rhythm. So whenever you think about the rhythm, the very first thing you have to worry about is the meter. Okay, meter is here, right? It's 4-4. Four, four. Actually, the rhythm might be okay because we dealt with a lot of eighth notes in our previous song. But remember how I asked you to count your eighth notes in the previous song. Yeah, 4-4 four, four would be 1, 2, 3, 4, right? But if you know you have to deal with a whole lot of eighth notes, just like our previous song, Finger Antics, just start counting with end in between, like 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and like that. So you would go 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and like that. I'm going to show you the rhythm. 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and... So that's the basic rhythm of this song. And also, this song tells you to review your rest signs. So that those rest signs, so this a square, a rectangle hanging from the second line from the top, that counts for four beats. This funny sign is for one beat. This is a quarter rest. So the difference between the whole rest here and the here, here, half rest here, these two are a little confusing, but the quarter rest, that's for four beats, hangs from uh, the second line from the top, and the half rest sits on top of the third line from the top or below here, sorry about that. Okay, now, so the rest means you don't have to play, so that's a good sign, but uh, with this song, it can be a little confusing because remember, you have to read two lines simultaneously, right? So just because uh, your left hand has rest signs, yeah, your right hand cannot stop. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that any rest sign, yeah, just like notes, they belong to a specific hand, okay? So yeah, your left hand will be resting, meaning not doing anything, but your right hand needs to move on. And especially if a song starts with a whole bunch of rests at the beginning for one hand, the hand, in your case, the left hand, needs to be careful where it should come in, okay? So one and two and three and four, and this is one, right? The first beat. The first beat you got the rest so the second beat is where this thing comes in and this thing three circles on top of each other whenever you see something like this yeah a bunch of note heads uh, lined up vertically that means you have to play them together okay so in most cases one three four using one three four like this yeah i'm in the wrong area of the keyboard but to just to show like that this would do if you want 4 to 1 is fine okay now uh i'll talk a little bit about notes in a sec but uh let's go over the big picture first so this one is a little tricky yeah this part they tell you to switch clefs until here okay again what we learned last week was that the treble clef does not mean right hand right it's a treble clef, yes, but the notes belong to the bottom set of five lines, so that means this here, left hand. Why? Because it's on the bottom set of five lines. So, so, but here, you see, 
switch back to the bass clef, bass clef, bass clef, bass clef, and here they tell you to switch to treble clef. So one note is this, or here. That's the middle C, right? Because they belong to the treble clef. But use your left hand. Yeah, I don't think I need to repeat myself why. So go toward the end. Okay. Before I talk about the, uh, how to go about learning this song, uh, I have to uh, point out, I know eighth notes are difficult, but yeah, still a lot of you are playing your eighth notes like... So I'm going to play this measure, okay? So one and two and three and four and one and... I'm sorry. One and two and three and four. Do you see? So two eighth notes followed by a quarter note. It was very even, right? Let me make it simpler. So what I'm trying to say is that your eighth notes should not sound like... This is still uh, what I'm hearing from a lot of you. And again, this is not, uh, you know, criticism. This is pretty complicated. But do you see what's wrong with this? I'm going to play a whole bunch of eighth notes. There is a long, short, I'm sorry, short, long, short, long, short, long pattern to eighth notes, which should be the same length. You should not hear any pattern. This is what you want to hear. It could be slower. Or even. But you shouldn't be able to tell, oh, that eighth note was longer than what came before. Yeah. Okay, now, this song, like I said, is difficult. You have to play a whole bunch of notes. But after you figure out the notes correctly, yeah, there is a trick you can use to make learning this song a little faster. But it's very important you read your notes correctly first. So um, if you want to figure out stuff on your own, stop the video right now and then... I still have to ask you to finish watching after you spend some time on your own with the song because this is one of the songs that take a long time to learn and I oftentimes have to ask people to redo it, okay? So even if you decide to stop this video right now and work some on your own, but uh, even then, please come back and watch the rest and make sure you did things, you're doing things correctly. Okay, so once you read the notes, yeah, I think a lot of you are writing in note names, which is fine. You will see it's a whole lot of repetition of C E G C E G, or it could be E G C, or it could be G C E. But note names you will be writing are uh, pretty much all three of those. However, one of those, one of the first things, very first things we learned this semester is that there are so many C's across the semester. For example, this is a C, this is a C, this is a C, for example. Okay, so um, let's look at the right hand. It's C, E, G, right? C is the middle C, E seems to be higher, and G is the one after that. Okay, so this would be something like this. This is my middle C. Now, next... E goes first, and then G, and then this is a C, but is this the middle C? Yeah. No, it's not, right? So you start, you start like this, and then you go up. Okay, and then what happens next? G, this G is above the middle C, and what note is this? That's a C, right? But that's not the middle C. So I don't want to give away too much. But both right hands and left hand, you will be writing, for example, here, C, E, G. And then it will become E, G, C. But make sure each time you're playing correct E and correct C. For example, this is... So this is how you start. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. three and four and then next you wrote to yourself so the next measure will be e g and c at this point make sure you mark somehow 
or you just look at the music so that you don't just play random E, G, and C. So next, I'm talking about the third measure. If you did this, you did something wrong. Okay? So I think you got the point that writing down E, G, C is not good enough because this is E, this is, this is, I'm sorry, this is G, this is C. So this is also E, G, C. Okay? To make an extreme example, this is an E. So this is E, this is G, this is C. So that's also E, G, C. C, C. So I think you got the point. Okay? But once you figure out the notes correctly, so I'm going to demonstrate the left hand. So left hand also starts with, so it's a chord, I'm sorry, I don't think you can see my pinky, like this. Okay, you will see that the next set of, so I play here, the next set of three notes, uh, first of all, make sure you lift your hand when you see the rest sign, okay? Don't just stay there by default lift, that's what the rest means. But the next set of three notes will be the same here, these two notes, and then C is gonna move up to here. So what I strongly recommend you do is that once you play this, don't just take your hand off completely. Keep your hand here, but not pushing down because you have the rest. Keep the hand here and use these two as your guidance because you're gonna need these two fingers again. So kind of slide over like this. Did you see what I did? So this is how you had your finger. Pinky, E, G like this, okay? And then you're gonna need these two notes, I'm sorry, these two notes again, but the third note you need is here, okay? So after you play this, lift your fingers, but not don't take your hand off, kind of slide over like this. Okay, so from here to like that. And the movement for the rest of the song will be kind of similar. The two top notes will be the same and then the bottom note will move over one cycle over, it's called the octave. So what you have to do is to kind of keep this, but you cannot use the same fingers. Kind of slide over, okay? So I'm going to play the first line so that you can see, you can kind of hear what it sounds like, but I don't really want to give away what I'm playing. So I'm going to move my camera over there so that you can look at the music and then play the first uh, few measures. This is what the rhythm should sound like. One and two and three and four and 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 like that. Ah, one last thing. Here, it's really hard to see, but don't forget that on top you actually have two notes, okay? So this is three notes together. Normally, they would put three notes together like this on top of each other, but this one they couldn't quite do that. So yeah, two top notes are kind of on um, right next to each other, side by side, but the same idea. Okay, thank you for watching the whole thing. Bye, thank you, good luck.